Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to show you how we can calculate RSI using Excel. So here I have already one year of data of uh, Nifty. I have OHLC stock or OHLC column and let's go for the step by step process. So the first thing that we have to calculate is the up value. That means we will check on the closing price that whether the current close is greater than the previous close. If yes, then we will subtract both of them. So the current row minus the previous row. And if no, then I'll just leave it as it is or I can put zero. So this is the first part. And once we have done that, we can just copy the entire formula right at the bottom. Let me make it a little better. The second thing is similarly down. That means we'll check if the current row is the closing price is less than the previous uh, value. If yes, then we will do previous minus the current and if no, we'll just make it zero. So you'll notice that whenever we have value here, it will be zero on the other, on the other side. And whenever we have value here, it will be zero on the, on the left side. But very important to note that both of these will be positive values only. Now let's say that we want to find out our RSI with period 14. That means we have to first find out the up average to do that since it's 14. So we have to go come 14 rows down. So this is the 14th row, this one. So all we have to do is we have to find the average of all the ups. So we have to find the average of all the up prices. So that's average of all the up values. And once we do that, we've got the average for the first row. So this is very important to note that we've got the average just for the first 14 um, uh, rows. And after that, the formula is a slightly different formula. So what we have to do is, is equal to, we'll multiply the previous average, we'll multiply the previous average with our RSI minus 14. So whatever is the pre period, we'll multiply that by, uh, multiplied by that, but minus one. And then we'll add the current up. We we'll add the current up value, which is this. So essentially what we're doing is we are finding it's like, a, since it's moving, um, it's, it's something like exponential moving average also that we first calculate what is the previous uh, up value up till then multiplied by 13 because 14 minus one. So we are multiplied by 13 plus the current up value plus the current up value, which is 7.2. And then we will divide it by 14 again. We'll divide it by 14 again. So that should give us the result. But when, one thing to note here is whenever we are using this RSI 14, we have to make it a dollar sign. So all I'm doing is making it a dollar here and a dollar here so that I can drag the formula right till the bottom. And once I do that, I, I have the, the up average for all my rows. And similarly, I'll find the down average. I'm going to just copy it and essentially what it is doing is first it is finding the average and then I'm copying the second kind of formula which is again multiplying the previous um, average by 13 and adding the current down and then dividing by entire thing by 14. So it's an average again and I can drag this formula right till the bottom. So I've got my up average and the down averages. Now before finding the RSI, we have to find the relative strength, which is called the RS. And in that, what we have to do is very easily, we'll just do the up average divided by the down average. So that will give us the RS. And then we have to find out the RSI. The formula of RSI is 100 minus 100 divided by open brackets this RS plus one. So essentially what it is doing is it is converting this into a number between one to hundred and that's it. So we have found our RSI. And if you see here, if let me just plot some data points of RSI, this is on a five minute time frame by uh, on a one minute time frame. So if we do this, you can see that this is the RSI, how it's looking like, and it will always be between zero and hundred. Now, very important thing to note 
um, you might have noticed that the RSI value uh, might be a little different in different charting platforms. And the reason now, as you can understand, is because it depends on how much data we have. So, if, for example, since I, if I am having the data from first March, um, my this is my RSI values, right? But let's assume we don't have the previous data. We we start with something in the middle. So let's say I'm going to just quickly. So the up and the down values will remain the same, but are from these four columns the the answers would change. So what I'm going to do is let me show you one thing. I'm going to copy this again, and let's assume that we do not have the original one month of data. So I'm going to just copy the formula, but I'm going to start with let's say. Let me go to a few days down so that I can show you how RSI value will change. So let's start from here so that we can start from from a new day. Right. So let's say we are starting from here from 11th of January. And now if I drag this right till the bottom, so this is my first 14 days. I'm um, sorry. The average I have to use is this one up. The down that I have to use again, the down. So we've got the up and down done for the first time. And then our formula will change also just a little bit. This will not be the J column. This will be the up column, which is I can just drag it here. And similarly, I can drag this to the down column. So what I've done is I have updated the formulas and let me just drag all the formulas down. And now you will start noticing that since I am starting calculating the RSI not from the 1st of January, but from the 11th of January, the RSI values are a slightly different. As you can see, it's 79 here compared to 78. Let me just make it a little bigger to understand. So this is 79 here compared to 78 here. So that is the small differences that we are seeing. And the reason I hope that you have understood is that because we are start, we are taking fewer values here, our RSI calculation is a slightly different. So obviously if in a, um, if in a particular charting platform, you have more data, your RSI will be a lot better. So more the data, the closer your actual RSI value will be, but there's a slight difference always depending on how much data there is on the, on the charting platform. So I hope you've understood how to calculate the RSI in Excel. Um, if you like the video, please, uh, like it and also subscribe to the channel. Let me quickly show you the formulas once again. Um, so the formulas are the first, um, up is just checking the current close and the previous close and taking the difference. Similarly down, we check if the current is less than the previous and we take the difference. For the first up average, we just take the average of last 14, for example, the period. period. Similarly, in the down the case, we take the average of previous 14 down values. And after that, we will take uh, the previous average multiplied by 13 plus the current up and divide the entire thing by 14 and similarly for the down and then the RS value is just the up average divided by the down average. And for RSI, we're just converting this into a number between one to hundred. So again, thank you very much for joining in and I'll see you in the next video.